Good morning. This is uh, Dr. Knotts, and uh, today I want to teach you about disassociation in the amnesic fuge. Um, thankfully, I can breathe today, so I decided to start doing videos again. Um, so I appreciate your prayers, continued healing. So let's start with prayer. Father, I do pray and ask that you bless each and every person that hears this, that Lord, you would equip them, give them knowledge, and bless them. So I was recently asked by an individual um, that knows they were molested by their father, and their sisters were also, why she couldn't remember it even though the other sisters could. And she described, I asked her to describe the household, and she said that her father was extremely abusive. And um, that he would regularly beat the mother and, and just do violence and violent acts, break things, throw things. Well, the reason why people will go through situations like that, of, of trauma or even of grief, for instance, if somebody dies and you, somebody you love it dies and passes away and you go to their funeral, it's not uncommon to not remember anything that may have happened that week. And that's called disassociated amnesia or amnesic fuge in psychology. Now, the reason why that happens is this. For instance, when the brain encounters something that is against the moral belief value system that is based in the fourth layer of the psyche. It is something too incomprehensible for it to have to deal with. So a child, a child is supposed to be protected by the father, loved by the father. The father is an image that is within their mind of the one who is to oversee them and, and nurture them. So what happens is when a father goes to abuse a child and sexually abuse it, that overwhelms the moral value system in the fourth layer of the psyche. This filtering system will then shut off the present conscience. The eyes will glaze over. The child will disassociate. This is called the denial system. It's what activates the disassociative continuum. You see, when something too horrific happens that goes against a person's beliefs, the mind will deny it happening. That's why a mother, a child can be abused, and the mother um, will simply disassociate. She'll hum to herself or go clean dishes. And to her, it's not happening because she's in denial. Denial says, you know, this can't be happening. Because this is the person supposed to love me and protect me. Why would he want to physically hurt me or sexually abuse me? Same thing with a mother and a son or any parent with a child. So what happens is the denial system kicks in because the brain simply does not want to acknowledge that what it believes is being challenged. It believes that the parent is the one that loves it, provides for it, and cares for it, and will protect it in all situations. So when that's challenged, it refuses to believe that that would happen. And you say, well, why? Because the very basis of life for the individual consists on that belief system. The child is unable to care for itself. It can't provide a house, uh, food, clothing, warmth, utilities, transportation. It doesn't even know how to do that. It is dependent upon the parent. And being such, the brain will allow it to happen, the sexual abuse or the physical abuse, because it needs to live more than anything. So it will activate what's called a denial mechanism. It's the first part of a self-defense construct mechanism, is the denial. So the denial kicks in, the eyes will glaze over, and the brain will then detach the frontal lobes, and it will activate not the complete rear, but the rear forward, which is right about here in the brain. And at that point, what will happen is a shell altar will take over. It will exist in the mind while the father does his abuse or the mother. And when that is over, the child will go through a series of uh, flushes in the brain, neurological, phenological flushes, you know, where the potassium and calcium fluctuates and it washes the memory. And what it creates is called a disassociate amnesia or a fuge amnesia. While the person was out, everything that happens will be erased from the memory. 
cortisol influx through the adrenaline rush will dissipate and calcium and potassium will exchange each themselves in the modulating centers of the memory which is held not only in the mind but in various parts of the brain. Unfortunately the body memories, the biokinetic memories of the physical abuse itself will remain in the parts of the body that were abused and they will be lodged there. The more times it happens the greater their, their consistency the greater their variation and the stronger their intensity will be. It will cause ab reactions later on when there's changes within the biomechanism itself. In other words, when you go from the second to the third life cycle or the fourth to the fifth. In other words, pass through the 40s and go into the 50s or 30s to 40s or from adolescence into puberty, etc. The amnesia will literally use the cortisol influx with the potassium to erase all the memories. That is why the individual does not have the ability to remember it. But their body will still show reactions. In other words, they'll be histrionic. They'll have anxiety that's unexplainable. They'll have an inability to uh, relax. They'll have, you know, perfection issues where everything's got to be right or they're always correcting people. It will manifest itself in a way that will exhibit itself in a survival mechanism. Because perfectionism is perfectionism is needed in the survival coping mechanism. They have to do whatever the person that's hurting them tells them to do. They have to do it to their best. So I hope that makes sense to you. That is why people can experience a traumatic event and not remember it. Um, this is Dr. Knotts. Once again, I, I thank you for your prayers. Um, I'm down to two arteries, but I can breathe today. I'm very thankful for that. So Lord bless you. If you have any questions, direct them to the website or underneath the video or call me directly. All right. In Christ's name I bless you. Amen.